Welcome to lecture 38 of the course Marine Propulsion. Today we will continue with unconventional propulsors. The key concepts covered in today's lecture are super cavitating propellers, tip modified propellers, cycloidal propellers which are also referred to as vertical axis propellers and oscillating propulsors. So, this is in continuation with our previous discussions on unconventional propulsors. We will start with super cavitating propellers. In propeller cavitation section, we have seen that cavitation phenomena has an adverse effect on the thrust and efficiency for a propeller and hence for conventional propeller, we try to avoid cavitation occurrence on the propeller blade and during propeller design, this is done by using suitable margins with respect to the thrust loading coefficient for a specific geometrical parameter of the propeller blade. Now, there are certain types of propeller which are called super cavitating propeller where cavitation is induced on the propeller blade by the geometric design of the blade. This is because for certain operation conditions it is almost impossible to have a propeller which is a conventional propeller without cavitation occurrence due to critical operation conditions. And hence, if a conventional propeller is used, its performance will not be optimal due to cavitation and its efficiency will be low. In these conditions where the loading is high and the cavitation number is sufficiently low during such operation conditions for high speed propellers, super cavitating propellers can be considered. And in these particular cases, they are found to provide suitable performance with respect to the thrust and efficiency. Now, in these super cavitating propellers, the back of the propeller blade section is fully covered with vapor filled cavity and this can be done using special geometric sections of the propeller blade. Due to its special geometric characteristics, a super cavitating propeller can be adopted for specific operation conditions which is a combination of the advanced coefficient j and the cavitation number as mentioned here, where its performance in terms of efficiency will be as good as a conventional propeller. Compared to a conventional propeller, the advantages of a super cavitating propeller for high speed operations is that it can have better noise and vibration characteristics and it also leads to reduced or no cavitation erosion on the propeller blade. As the cavitation bubble covers the entire back side of the propeller blade and the flow is separated right from the leading edge, so there is almost no cavitation erosion which in conventional propellers can be a problem at high propeller loading where the cavitation number can be critical and cavitation may occur which induces some erosion or damage on the propeller blade. So, in terms of application this super cavitating propellers are useful for high speed vessels like racing motor boats where in comparison to high engine power the propeller rpm is also high, but the propeller immersion as well as the available diameter is low. So, these are the ideal conditions for cavitation to occur and hence conventional propellers are not good solutions for these particular cases and super cavitating propellers can be effectively applied for better performance. Now, in terms of the blade geometry, the idea of achieving a super cavitating propeller design is to ensure 
complete separation of the flow on the back of the propeller blade and also we have to achieve a high lift to drag ratio because that gives the proper thrust performance. Now to achieve these conditions the blade sections have typically sharp leading edges and different blade sections have been used some of which are mentioned here. The tulin section a modified version of the same and cup trailing edge section. Now in all these sections the leading edge is very sharp. So we have the leading edge here LE which is very sharp and that ensures flow separation on the back of the propeller blade where the entire cavitation bubble is covering the back. So the trailing edge is somewhat in the shape of a wedge and the leading edge is very sharp. And in the third sectional geometry the trailing edge is cupped. So all these different sections have been effectively employed for super cavitating propeller design. Now what are the challenges for super cavitating propeller design? Here we have a very thin leading edge for the propeller blade section and because of that strength problems may arise for different operation conditions and they may be very critical for the propeller blade. On the other hand the performance in the low speed range and off design conditions may also not be satisfactory because the super cavitating propeller is designed to obtain flow separation by the formation of cavitation bubble on the back of the propeller blade in the design condition. Now that is for high speed operation. In the low speed range the cavitation is not formed over the entire propeller blade and due to that the performance is not satisfactory and also in off design condition the performance of super cavitating propeller is not satisfactory and these factors need to be considered while designing a super cavitating propeller for a specific application. Next we will look into another class of propellers where the tip is modified to obtain better performance characteristics and hence they are called tip modified propellers. So a basic version of these tip modified propellers include an end plate which is attached to the propeller blade tip and due to that end plate the tip vortices which are the trailing vortices generated from the propeller are suppressed and this allows a better radial circulation distribution such that the propeller loading at the blade tip can be increased and this can lead to higher efficiency for the propeller. So by modifying the tip of the propeller blade where one can put an end plate the circulation distribution can be modified by suppressing the trailing vertices from the propeller blade and examples of these tip modified propellers are tip vortex free propellers or contracted and loaded tip propellers CLT propellers which have been effectively used to obtain better efficiency and they have slightly different configurations of the end plate which is attached to the propeller blade tip. So this is an example of CLT propeller where the blade tip is modified and that leads to the suppression of the trailing vortices from the propeller blade. Now there are also some other designs of the propeller blade which have been developed in the same concept by modifying the blade tip in such a way that the tips are provided with a small curvature or rake. They are the capel propeller and lips tip rake propeller which also have the same concept where the tip is modified to finally get a different circulation distribution and better performance of the propeller blade. What are the advantages of 
active modified propeller by modifying the propeller blade tip the strength of the trailing vortices which are shed from the propeller blades is reduced. Now, the occurrence of cavitation in the core of the vortices shed from the propeller blade will depend on the vortex strength and higher the strength of the tip vortex at high propeller loading conditions the greater will be the chance of the core of the vortex to be at a much lower pressure where the cavitation can occur which is visualized as the tip vortex cavitation. Now, in these tip modified propellers because the strength of the trailing vortices can be reduced the chances of the occurrence for tip vortex cavitation is also reduced. Next improvements can be obtained for the propeller efficiency. Now, by modifying the propeller blade tip we have discussed that a more convenient circulation distribution can be used for the propeller blade and the blade tip loading can be slightly increased because the strength of the tip vortices can already be reduced by the inclusion of the tip modification and this leads to the improvement of the propeller efficiency. And finally, these tip modified propellers due to the end plate design for certain operation conditions can have additional thrust due to the thrust contribution from the end plate. So, these advantages can be obtained from tip modified propellers. From the disadvantage point of view, these tip modifications typically by end plates may increase the drag of the propeller blade and which may result in the reduction of the efficiency. So, the modifications and their design should be considered with respect to these effects that it can bring on the performance of the propeller blade. For the next unconventional propulsor type we have the cycloidal propeller. These propellers have blades which are typically oriented in the vertical direction. So, these are the axis of the propeller blade and they are fitted on a base which is horizontally fixed at the stern of the ship and these blades can be rotated about their individual axis and the disc on which the blades are fitted is also revolving about the axis. Here. So, in these class of propellers which are called cycloidal and also because they have their axis oriented vertically they are named as vertical axis propellers. The propeller blades are fitted on a disc which revolves about its own axis here and each of these blades can rotate about their individual axis. These propellers can give very good maneuvering capability to the vessel. Now, depending on the path traversed by the blade sections, these propellers can have different types. So, if V is the forward speed of the ship and omega is the angular velocity of the propeller, the path described by each blade as shown here can be epicycloid, cycloid or trochoid depending on the relative value of V and omega r where r is the radius of the propeller. Now, these vertical axis propellers have many blades the number of which depend on the propulsion performance required and these blades can be rotated about the vertical axis and we have a steering center here which governs the path of the propeller blade. 
for different operation condition and that directs the thrust of the propeller blade as per the requirements of forward motion or maneuver. Now, the efficiency of these cycloidal propellers are generally lower as compared to conventional propellers. So, they are used in specific vessels where a very high degree of maneuverability is required, which is not possible with conventional propeller and rudder system. Typically, towing vessels and short sea ferries where these vertical axis propellers find their application. Some design examples of vertical axis propellers are the Kirsten Boeing propeller and the Voith Schneider propeller, which is the more popular design and has been effectively applied to different tugs and ferry designs for very good maneuverability purposes. Finally, we will discuss oscillating propulsors in brief. Now, the swimming motions of fishes and other aquatic animals have inspired scientists and engineers to develop these specialized propulsors which are oscillating propulsors which mimic the flapping fin motion of fishes. Now, how does a fish propel itself through water? A fish has different types of fins on different location of its body on the dorsal and ventral sides on the sides and the tail fin. Now, these fins have different types of flapping motions and in coordination to a part of the body which is flexible, a fish can generate the thrust force which allows it to move ahead and also for its different motion characteristics in both the vertical as well as the horizontal plane. So, these oscillating fin motions result in the generation of vortices and finally, propulsive forces are generated which aids the swimming movement or the locomotion for a fish and these movements are controlled by muscular movement as well as the structure of the fins for the fish. Based on this concept, oscillating propulsors have been developed which have standard airfoil sections. Now, these airfoil sections by their oscillation, they produce lift forces. The component in the direction of motion is a thrust and because the foil is oscillating at a particular frequency and an oscillation amplitude that generates a periodic force. So, the thrust generated by an oscillating foil is periodic and we assess the performance depending on the thrust over a complete oscillation cycle and a combination of heave and pitch motions can also be adopted for specific application. Here an animation is shown for an oscillating foil in pure pitching motion and the vortices formed in the wake are visualized. So, we have an alternating set of vortices which are rotating in opposite directions and for thrust generation the set of vortices are typically named as reverse von Karman vortices which lead to thrust generation for oscillating foil. Now, for oscillating foils, we have the time average thrust T bar over the complete cycle and W bar is the work done to maintain the motion over a complete cycle. Then the efficiency for the oscillating foil is given by this expression and these oscillating foils have performance characteristics depending on the thrust generation and efficiency which depend on the geometry, motion characteristics and also the flexibility. So, if we have a flexible foil, it provides a higher efficiency in general as compared to a rigid foil. Now, 
with regards to application these oscillating foil has been employed on autonomous underwater vehicles or AUVs which have bio inspired propulsion systems. That means, the propulsion system or the flapping foil is inspired from the flapping fin motions for aquatic animals. Now, in this particular course, we have studied different types of propulsor ranging from conventional screw propeller to ducted propellers which are propellers in nozzle to super cavitating propellers, vertical axis propeller and contra rotating propellers etcetera. In this figure the optimum open water efficiency which can be obtained from different propulsor types is shown as a function of the propeller power coefficient which is given by this particular expression. So, we have the conventional B series propellers which have very good efficiency in the optimum operation range and we have propellers in nozzles which provide high efficiency in high propeller loading conditions and other propellers like vertical axis propellers and fully cavitating propellers which have efficiencies over a range of power coefficient as given and the contra rotating propellers which have very high efficiency even in comparison to conventional propellers. So, this figure gives an idea of the optimum efficiency for different power coefficient value which corresponds to different propeller loading conditions. And if we see the different ship types which are mentioned here which corresponds to these different propeller loadings in general, we have the tugs and trawlers which operate at high loading conditions and then cargo and container ships, bulk carriers and on the other side we have the twin screw ships. So, this figure gives a simple representation of the applicability of these propulsor designs for different conditions. This will be all for our discussions on unconventional propulsors. Some references are mentioned here which can be useful to study different types of propellers. Thank you.